Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pei Huiding from Faculty of Dentistry, Zhejiang University School of Medicine. Today, I'd like to give you a short topic about the application of xenogenic collagen matrix in augmentating keratinized mucosa around dental implants. Before we start the topic, let's review some of the cl some of classical literatures about the clinical significance of keratinized mucosa around implants. Uh, let's first of all see some retrospective studies. Uh, Professor Holem once several years ago studies studied more than three hundred peri implant heart and soft tissue conditions and uh, uh, concluded that the lack of sufficient keratinized tissue was associated with higher plaque index and gingival index, but not with bone loss around implants. Another study also observing more than 300 implants in 58 patients for five years and showed that plaque accumulation, bleeding and probing, and mucosa recession were more likely to occur in implant size with KM less than 2 mm. While uh, Daniel Thoma, Professor, Dan Professor Thoma, they uh, observed 87 patients for five years. Their results show that the correlation between the width of peri-implant keratinized tissue and the plaque index, bleeding of probing, probing depths, and marginal bone level was negligible. Uh, they saw that these results may be related to their strict periodontal maintenance plan and close follow-up. Other prospective studies uh, there's one interesting prospective study uh, that is 10-year results uh, of uh, the keratinized mucosa around implants in partially endotelous posterior mandible. Uh, it was divided into three groups, that is, one group with KT, one group only has alveolar mucosa, no KT. And the third group is the uh, some of the cases in alveolar mucosa group did a uh, free gingival grafts and had KT. Uh, the results is quite interesting. It shows that the implants that are not surrounded by KT are more prone to plaque accumulation and gingival recession. It was quite similar uh, in the study, in the results with the studies of uh, the uh, retrospective studies I mentioned before. Even in patients uh, who had sufficient oral hygiene and receiving adequate supporting periodontal therapy. And in selected cases, uh, particularly in, in the edatulous posterior mandible, where rich resorption leads to reduced vestibular depth and lack of KT, additional free gingival graft can be beneficial to facilitate proper oral hygiene procedures. Uh, we can also see several systematic review in systematic reviews in the literature. Uh, These four uh, systematic review answered quite similar uh, uh, research questions of KT around dental implant is necessary. Uh, the conclusion uh, is also uh, uh, is is that the uh, at the presence of adequate store of KT may be necessary because it was shown to be related to better peri-implant tissue health, while it may not be uh, related, associated with the bone uh, loss around implant. So, uh, we give a short, we give a brief summary of the clinical significance of KT around implant is that uh, the KT is associated with poor plaque control of the patients and causes a change in gingival index and protein probing depth and an increased risk of developing peri-implant mucositis. Uh, 
Although the direct link between keratinized tissue and implant survival has not been confirmed, the importance of KT around the implant cannot be ignored. And the uh, consensus, the consensus, consensus report on uh, um, 2019 of the Austere Large Foundation uh, suggests that uh, when KM is less than 2 mm, surgical intervention is recommended to perform. So we are going to talk about the surgical techniques of the KT augmentation uh, from the uh, classical uh, the apical position split flap to modified apically positioned flap to nowadays we we usually uh, choose an apically positioned flap with the application of autogenous tissue in our daily practice or we sometimes may choose uh, uh, we like we, we hope that we may choose a substitute material to uh, instead of the autogenous tissues. Uh, this is uh, the uh, cases we only we, we usually saw in our daily practice. It was quite easy. We can do a free gingival graft to do uh, to augment the keratinized mucosa. And it can always give us a very good results. But when we are doing such kind of routine surgery in our daily practice, we may also have some thinking. Uh, because the autogenous tissue also has some limitations, like the post-surgery mobility. A uh, patient may feel uncomfortable after surgery. And also, it has limited access. If we want to do large area of free gingival grafts, maybe the material is the autogenous tissue is not enough. And it can also hurt some vascular and nerve. And uh, when we are doing the free gingival graft in the aesthetic area, the 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 aesthetics is not real. Is not usually is not. Uh, it's not acceptable sometimes, most of times. And because we have the second surgical area, so the, the surgical time is much more longer. So we are thinking, is there any alternatives that we may choose in our near future? Uh, several years ago, Professor Sands uh, did a study of uh, a pokering a collagen matrix in augmentation keratinized mucosa around implants. It is a, a six-month single-blinded longitudinal a randomized clinical trial. And the one group is the uh, uh, the experimental group that use this kind of collagen matrix. The another group is use the the control group is using the connective tissue grafts. The results show that when uh, when a xenogenic collagen matrix was used as a soft tissue substitute to increase the weight of keratinized tissue around implants, it was as effective and uh, uh, predict predictable as CTG. But uh, when we read this uh, this paper, I I was we we are thinking that why uh, Professor Sands was not choosing uh, the and the FGG because we all, we all know that the contraction rate of the FGG is much less than CTG. Later on, another study, uh, they uh, use they did a comparative uh, post uh, prospective clinical trial using the uh, APF plus FGG versus APF plus X. Uh, they are doing this in the anterior region uh, when KT is less than 2 millimeters. The maximum follow-up is 5 years. Uh, when we see the results, we see the 5-year results show that FGG and XM can be used to increase the width of keratinized mucosa around implant, but FGG has better long-term stability. So, uh, based on the uh, these two studies and the, uh, the 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 literatures we reviewed, we uh, plan to have a study of uh, 
of uh, augmentation of keratinized tissue uh, for two groups. That one group is the uh, XCM, the another group is free gingival graft. We want to evaluate the efficacy of uh, an apically representation flag with XCM or RFGG for gain of KT. We also want to assess the effects of soft tissue augmentation procedures on the maintenance of peri-implant soft tissue health to compare patient-related outcomes such as post-operative discomfort and patient satisfaction. We also want to evaluate different grafting materials for uh, superiority in terms of the aesthetic outlook of regenerated mucosa. So we, did, uh, we, we design our study like uh, this chart. The inclusion criteria is that uh, one of the inclusion criteria is that the presence of at least one site with less than two millimeter of KT. Uh, but no more than three consecutive implants. Uh, let me show you one of our cases. Uh, this is Mr. John, 65 years old. Uh, he has uh, lost his mandibular tooth uh, six years ago. Uh, three months ago, he did uh, two implants. Uh, one is uh, in the site of 3-3 three, three, and the other is uh, for 44. He systematically healthy and non-smoking. The KM around 3, the buckle KM around uh, 33 is 1.1 1 point, 1 point, 1 point millimeter and around 44 is 1.5 millimeters. So, um, uh, very uh, uh, interesting. Uh, this, when we do the randomized uh, numbers. Uh, one, uh, one, one area is uh, allocated into the free gingival graft and the other one is luckily enough to have the XCM. So we can compare these two groups in one uh, patient. Uh, this is a uh, one week after surgery. If I don't check uh, the two areas with uh, the two areas, it was quite difficult to uh, see which one is using FGG and which one is using XM. And this is two weeks post-surgery, two months post-surgery, and six months uh, post-surgery, the, the intraoral photos. And when we look at the index, we, we see that both groups uh, were increased with the, uh, the, uh, the width of uh, KM. And the thickness is, uh, is also the thickness uh, of the F FGG is, is increased a little bit while the uh, thickness of the XM is not increased. Uh, the average GI and average PPD is, uh, is not uh, quite uh, fluctuated. We also see the uh, the surgical time, the patient satisfaction, and the gingival aesthetic score. Uh, the surgical time, of course, the XM group is less than the FGG group. The patient satisfaction is the same. Uh, when we do the gingival aesthetic score, uh, the XM group is much better than the FGG group. And this is 15 months post-surgery the FGG group and the mucografts group. Uh, here, because of the time limit, I, I didn't show all of our study results. Uh, but in summary, we, we, we see that the, uh, AP, uh, the, the APF plus FGG is still the golden standard of our protocol uh, to augment KM. Why we believe that the substitute material may be the future. Thank you very much. Uh, to uh, our group, uh, to the Department of Peri Implant Prosthodontics of our faculty and our university, and to my students. Thank you very much.